G'day guys, it's me, Ash, and I'm just gonna share a little story with you today. Um, and it's about the time when I figured out how, how, just how powerful the mind is when it comes to how we live and what we achieve in life and how much we get to fully experience this life. And so I'm gonna take you back about, about 10 years ago, approximately, and I was seeing a psychologist at the time. I was living in Melbourne. I was living in Docklands in my little one bedroom apartment. I was about, I was early 20s. And I was seeing this psychologist because I actually had an eating disorder at that time, which is something that not many people know about. I was thankfully able to overcome that probably within a couple of years, but I was seeing a psychologist at the time because I was suffering with a bit of depression on and off, and I was struggling with this eating disorder, and I'll explain a bit about that in a minute, but I was seeing this really good psychologist, his name was Jared Pennington, and he was really fantastic, he was really good, and I spent a lot of time with him, and he was in Turak, so I used to get the tram to Turak. It would probably take me 30 to 40 minutes getting on the tram from Docklands, because I didn't have a car at the time. And so it was a bit of a journey, but I didn't mind taking that journey, because I felt the, the value of seeing this psychologist and he was very good and, and he taught me some mindful practices now he wasn't the first psychologist that had taught me some mindful practices I had seen a psychologist previous to to Jared and he had done some mindfulness um, a little like a guided meditation with me and I felt the power of mindfulness so when I continued on with this new psychologist in Turak, because the first psychologist that I saw was, <clears throat> so at the time I was umpiring, uh, I was a field umpire, umpiring football in the VFL down in Melbourne. I was living in Docklands and, um, and the VFL had a sports psychologist who could sort of help out if anyone had issues and so that's who I went and saw first. He was in Footscray. I went to his home and he did some mindfulness practice with practices with me. And I saw this guy a couple of times, but I wasn't able to keep seeing him on a regular basis. So he referred me to a clinical psychologist being Jared Pennington in Turak, who was really good. And we continued to deepen the mindfulness practices. And I remember a pivotal moment, which I'll, I don't think I'll ever forget. I was sitting, so it was at, it was this, Jared was at Turak Village in Turak, and he was in this little shopping center precinct. And I remember sitting on the steps. It was either before or after the session. I think it was after. And I was just really in the moment, and I was really mindful. I was in a really, mindful state and I could hear the birds, the wind, the trees, the cars that were passing, the people that were passing. It was a pretty quiet little street so there wasn't much traffic but I, I was really mindful and I just felt so calm and at ease in that moment. And I remember that feeling and that that was the that was the moment when I realized just how powerful the mind is. That was just one moment. I've got another powerful moment that I'm going to share with you as well. So that was my introduction to mindfulness. Now, the reason so I just coming back to the eating disorder that I had at the time, which I haven't shared a lot about, but um, I think it's worth sharing for people because I think it'll be helpful. So when I was umpiring in the VFL, I was a field umpire and I was taking it very seriously and the coaches were quite harsh down in the VFL umpiring department at that time. 
And we used to get our skin folds taken, I think twice a year. And so that was part of like keeping people in check, making sure that people were, were doing the right things in terms of eating and exercise. And it was just a measure for the, for the coaches and a lot of the guys down there, they also, they were quite fearful about the skin folds. Now I was always quite lean and I, I never really needed to worry about the skin folds. There was a lot of guys on the list that were really, really fearful. And they would even fast, like for like the day before the skin folds um, to try and get that number, whatever it was, under where it needed to be. There was a lot of fear there for a lot of guys and it got talked about a lot and it rubbed off on me a bit. And so I started to take my diet even more seriously. I was already pretty focused on making my diet as clean and healthy as possible to help my performance and recovery. But I took it to a new level once I got introduced to this skin fold testing and had to get that done regularly. So that wasn't a very good practice in hindsight for them to be doing or, or anyone to be doing. And that's a reason why I, do, I encourage people not to weigh themselves on the scale or even do body measurements. It just can play with the mind too much and have too much of a negative effect from my experience. So anyway, so I had I developed this eating disorder and the reason was because I was trying to be so perfect like all the time with my diet, but that wasn't sustainable or achievable. So I'd I'd end up slipping somewhere and having a bit of junk food or something. I, I used to crave a lot of chocolate because chocolate was a comfort food for me as a child growing up. So I'd often go to like a block of Cadbury's chocolate or something and I'd end up binge eating because I was depriving myself of calories and what I needed, trying to be too strict with my diet and then I would rebound and it was an all or nothing mindset. So once I had fallen off that routine and being strict with my diet, I would just be like, all right, it's all done. It's like you're completely off the rails now. So I would binge eat as, as much junk food as I felt I needed to, to comfort myself. So that was it. That's a bit about the eating disorder that I had at the time. I was able to overcome that though because, and I worked with this psychologist who was really, really great and he showed me the power of mindfulness, but that wasn't enough to heal my eating disorder. So I kept working with this psychologist a little bit um, for probably probably a year, probably did 20 odd sessions, 25 sessions with him. And I still wasn't able to break through and, and move past that eating disorder. But then I, I did my own research and I found a book called Brain Over Binge and I read it and this was a long time ago, but basically what it showed me and helped me to understand is that it's important not to attach a label to yourself if you want to grow past that label and, and maybe not have that label one day. So when I was working with the psychologist, he gave me a diagnosis and he said, Ash, you've got an eating disorder. Initially, I was like, really? Like, like, come on, like. Um, but it fit the definition. And, and so he gave me that diagnosis. But for me, that diagnosis was really unhelpful because then I attached to that label and I was like, okay, I'm Ash. I've got an eating disorder. This is just me now. This is just part of me. And... I attached to that identity, it became part of my identity. And I was never going to move past that um, that eating disorder unless, like, I was never going to be able to move past that eating disorder while I was attached to having that as part of my identity. So what this book told me, and this, this is the profound realization when I had the, the power of the mind, and... A shift. It, when I read that book, it just shifted my perspective and my mindset, and I decided that that was no longer going to be part of my identity, and I stopped referring myself with my, the voice in my head and the words that I spoke to others. I 
stopped referring to myself as someone with an eating disorder. And I just made that conscious decision that that wasn't who I am. And it just fell away easily and effortlessly. And occasionally I might get triggered like, and there might be like a small glimpse of that eating disorder still there, but it's pretty much just absolutely gone. And, um, I do a lot of work these days and over the past 10 years, I've done a lot of work on managing my health and well-being to manage my triggers so I can choose not to be triggered as often. And in the cases where I do get triggered, I'm able to sit with that and be more comfortable with the emotions that are coming up and not act in a way that's out of out of alignment with my values. So obviously binge eating junk food, which I was doing back in this period about 10 years ago in my early 20s, wasn't in line with my values of managing my health and well-being and living a full life, serving others and looking after my family and friends. That wasn't in line with my values because it wasn't going to help me to achieve that. It was going to make me feel lethargic and tired and sick and be unhealthy and 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 yeah so that would have the opposite effect of, of in terms of creating the life manifesting the life that I wanted to create so that those two experiences were extremely profound for me the first one that feeling that mindfulness that feeling of mindfulness and being in the present moment when i felt that all the way back then I knew how powerful mindfulness was and, and it sort of led to my expansion of studying yoga and meditation and plant medicines and all the stuff that I do now. That was the very beginning of that expansion. And then the second was just the power of the mind. We all have the ability to decide and choose who we are and how we refer to ourselves and if if we attach ourselves to labels, so if we say that I'm Dave the accountant, then you're going to behave like and live like Dave the accountant. And if you uh, Jess with an eating disorder or, or Callie with anorexia, then you're going to behave like Callie with anorexia. So the diagnosis can be helpful in terms of figuring out some treatment strategies, but You've got to be careful not to attach to the diagnosis and that label because if it becomes who you are, then it's very hard to let go of because then that feels unsafe. So I started to feel safe with that label and it became part of who I was. And then there was fear that if that label disappeared, who would I be? It's like a fear of success, a fear of growing into your full potential. It's like, oh my God, am I ready to do that? And there's, that's a bit of the ego there as well that's trapping you in that cycle of keeping you where you are, restricting your growth. Um, that's the ego dominating to, to protect the ego. But you can transcend the ego. You can place the ego back in its box where it belongs and allow it to be there and serve us, but not not dominate our lives and keep us in the suffering and the pain and unpleasant situations. So now with my work, when I work with people and, and my work with myself and my family, mindset is just key to everything. If you get your mindset right, then everything else is so much easier everything else so get the mindset right and learn basic mindful mindfulness practices like yoga meditation i did a gym workout this morning at elements health and fitness i did nose breathing throughout the whole workout 
I moved slowly and mindfully and I got into my body. I was fully in the moment. So pretty simple, really simple actually. If you need help with any of this, guys, just reach out to me. Send me an email, ashbedford89 at gmail.com. Um, or you can send me a message on here as well. Or you can head to the website, www.zazenfitness.com. That's Z-A-Z-E-N, fitness.com. Um, you can find about find more about me and the work that I do. Um, but that's really become my specialization is mastering, helping people to master their mindset and helping them to be fully in the moment. And if you get those two things right, you can pretty much achieve anything that you want in this life. You can manifest absolutely anything. Beautiful relationships with all your friends and families and co-workers. You can manifest financial abundance. You can manifest businesses that have beautiful offerings to the community where you get to show up to work every day and live your passion. Um, there's just so many beautiful things that can manifest from having these two powerful anchor points in your life. So if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a beautiful day and lots of love from me.